gentleman from North Dakota is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and I'd yield to you. Thank you. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Trustee, 17 years at the Department of Justice. Did the raid on Mar-a-Lago follow normal process? I don't believe so. You know who agrees with you? The assistant FBI director of the Washington field office, because we deposed it. And I just want to walk you through and say if, if, if what you see, uh, saw squares with what Mr. D'Antuano testified to in a deposition in front of the committee. The Miami field office did not conduct the search. It's folks from Washington who came down and did the search. Is that unusual? I would think so. You'd normally have at least some local component. The department did not assign a U.S. attorney to head up the investigation. They ran it out of the field office. They ran it out of Washington, D.C. Is that unusual? Well, I'm not sure it's unusual for DOJ attorneys to kind of assume authority in a vacuum. So, you know, my understanding is Jay Bratt was involved from day one and that that continued through the search warrant, obviously. Right, but no, normally wouldn't a, wouldn't a U.S. attorney be assigned to it in most cases? Yeah, and eventually they would show up for court, but I don't think at that part of the process they were an active partner. Did the FBI seek consent before they conducted the research? Or the, uh, the search? No, actually, the last thing that President Trump said when he allowed FBI agents in Mar-a-Lago in June was, anything you need, let me know. The only communication that came from DOJ after that was a request to put a padlock on the door where they knew the boxes were, and then the next thing we know, which, two which months... Which the president later, complied which with. Which he did immediately, and two months later, there's a search warrant. And then did the uh, FBI wait when they got on premise, had it secured, did they wait for President Trump's legal team to be there and accompany them on the search? They, there were requests by representatives of President Trump to be you know, in the vicinity of the search. Those were denied. That is a right of law enforcement. They don't have to. But for a case of this historical precedence, consistent with my earlier remarks, some transparency, some openness would have been probably a valuable moment lost here. Yeah, no, no kidding. Uh, talk to me about, in your testimony, um, Two other things. You, you mentioned the, the, the 14th <clears throat> Amendment. I mean, this, this to me struck me as just absolutely craziness, that they're going to go to state courts and try to keep the president off the ballot. Tell me your thoughts on this, this crazy concept. Well, you know, the Supreme Court unanimously agreed to, to end the nonsense of the disqualification litigation, but I, they never really reached the due process, which would have been a... a, a a hornet's nest of going state by state and saying, how did they conduct these expedited trials? The, the fact that always grabbed me, and maybe this goes back to having a bad sense of humor, was in Colorado, they literally put a sociologist on the witness stand to say, when President Trump said, go peaceful and patriotically, I know from my Ouija board or whatever else he consults, that he really means be violent and attack the cops. Yeah. I mean, that was considered admissible information in a hearing designed to take a presidential candidate off of a ballot. So I kind of wanted the Supreme Court to get the due process and, yeah. and join me in laughing at that, yeah. no but kidding. they never got there. Yeah, what he said, I've concluded, means exactly the opposite, and the court accepted that as evidence. Thank goodness the Supreme Court said 9 to 0. This is crazy. I want to read you one other thing from your, your testament, which I just found amazing, and you briefly touched on it earlier. You said, if the pre this is a grand jury situation, in the grand jury, the prosecution said to uh, Mr. Parlatori, if the president is being so cooperative, why won't he waive his attorney-client privilege? The fact that they asked that question in a grand, I mean, is, again, maybe as crazy as the whole 14th Amendment argument. Yeah, I mean, again, nothing I'd seen in 35 years, and it was a, uh, an over-aggressive moment of asking the grand jury to draw a negative inference right. from a lawful invocation of attorney-client privilege. That's just black letter unethical for a prosecutor to do. Yeah, scary, scary stuff that we see going on, all to go after their political opponent, and we could, we could go on with example after example. Um, I mean... The one before, where the dangling the judgeship in front of a lawyer representing, when you got Jay Bratt and the DOJ there, is just, I mean, I, again, we could, we could go on and on. I want to thank you both for, for testifying and would yield back.